hopefully you can see as I go through these screens, that the system has a nice way of organizing their jobs, a nice way to drill, drill down throughout the program to be able to see the detail behind. Same subcontracts, if I, I don't have any on this project, but if I did, they would be listed here in this subcontracts window and I'd be able to drill down onto those. Change orders works the same way. We're going to get the list. We're going to be able to look at those. If I need to see the detail on of the, any of those, I could drill down and get to the change order screen. On my change order screen, I have two tabs. The first one is prime change or owner change. Um, that's the one that's going to change our contract amount. The second tab is going to change our budgeted line item or subcontract. If you had a subcontract and you needed to change the subcontract agreement line item, you could do that in the second tab. The change orders, once approved, is when they'll come through to the job reports. Uh, right now, mine is in status open, so we probably uh, sent it off. We're waiting for approval. Once it's approved, I would come in here and change the status to number one. Right, let's close on out of that. And then the other buttons at the bottom of the job screen, if you wanted to look at your invoices relating to this project or your payments, contract summary, AP invoices, you would be able to click on all of those as well. Now I'm going to go into some job-specific reports. I won't be, the system has so many, I'm not going to be able to go into all of them, but hopefully give you a flavor for what you can get out of the system. Job summary report is the first one I'm going to go into. And if you have divisions, you can run this by division. I'm going to run this for my job number 60. And pull this up on the screen here. So our job cost summary is going to give you, basically think of this one as budget to actual. So your cost codes are going to be on the left. That's going to be how we budgeted the job. So whether that's, this looks like it has about 15 of them, whether it's 15 or one or two or 50, whatever that number is, those are going to be here. That amount from the budget, when we enter the job budget, is going to be in the first column. Second column is going to be if we had any of those budgetary change orders, so any of the parts of the change order that needed to affect a line item in the budget, that's going to be in the second column, and then you're going to get your revised budget. Then the costs that are in that cost column are going to be any accounts payable invoices that were entered, so when you enter an accounts payable invoice, let's say um, it was for permits or, yeah, let's say permits, you would enter job 60, then that it was permits, and then it would, that's how it's going to come into that particular line item. So if I double click on it, I, can ha I ha actually have a journal entry in here and I have um, an, a vendor invoice. So, that's how you're marrying the cost code to the actual AP invoice. And labor, when labor's charged, it, it can also be entered into the job and the cost code. So that's how the labor's gonna get to a particular line item. 